And guys, yes, I, I did get engaged. All right, had to. Hey, congratulations. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Ha Thank you, Kareem. I wanted to join you. I appreciate it. And you know, that was the last investment of 2022. All right, it took a, it took a huge chunk. You know, you might've been wondering, when's D buying more real estate? That was the real estate, all right? It's, now I gotta recover, all right? <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out in 23. <laughs> we're gonna figure it out in 23. What's up everyone? This is Niyi Adewale, host of the Akaba Home Financial Freedom Mastermind Group. This group meets virtually every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And the members of this group are committed to achieving financial freedom well before the traditional retirement age. So in this podcast, you are going to get VIP access to the conversations we have about different forms of investment and creative ways to get your dollars working harder for you than you originally worked to obtain those dollars. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Financial Freedom Mastermind Group. It is good to be joining you for the second week in January. And I know that last week we focused a lot on goals. This week really just wanted to reconnect with the group, see what everybody has going on, and and continue to help out from there. So anybody that wants to join, feel free to chat in questions, feel free to join from your laptop, and we'll get started here shortly. And now we've got the whole team on. Welcome everyone. And actually wanted to kick this one off with a couple questions and a congratulations to Amity on getting her first BNB up and running. Congrats to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the piece that really threw me off when you texted it over, I was like, hey, this, this can't be real. I got to see the receipts. But right. Amity was able to furnish a four bed, three bath for less than 10K. Amity, please let us know how you do A lot of research took a lot of research. I just don't go off the first thing I see. And I think you can you can find reasonably priced furniture and still get good quality at the same time. But the way to do that is, well, mainly we went through, we used Safer and Amazon, a lot of Amazon for like, you know, the smaller pieces. Some of the bigger pieces, we really looked at Wayfair. And Wayfair is kind of like your your Amazon with different companies providing different types of furniture, so you can have the low quality, and then you have to you really have to read and take the time to really research through all of it, so that you don't you get the best quality for the lowest price. So those are the main two, and then I also went to Overstock.com as well. So we were able to pull it off, but okay. it does take require a little bit more time and research to do it. <laughs> That's the thing. Of course. Yeah. Of course. No, that is amazing. That's a huge feat. I know, I don't know if everybody's heard of a guy, Rob Bilt, but he's huge in the short-term rental space. And one of the things he always preaches is buying nice, not thrice. And so that's, that's the key. What you just mentioned, these sites sell furniture all ranges, but you being able to seek out, hey, this is the quality ones. I've read the reviews. I've checked other sites and pulling those in. Exactly. Yeah. And so we ended up spending 8500 total for all furniture pieces. <laughs> nice. And then the, then the other was, was just repairs and stuff like that. But I met my goal, so I'm surprised. It was, it was amazing that I met it. Hey, that is awesome. Congrats, Amity. Happy that you're Thank kicking you. this off. As we're heading into the spring, this is one of the best times to get going so that you can get a couple yeah. of reviews before March when it Absolutely. takes off. Yeah. I finally got my first booking and I was waiting for that long stretch to get the second one. And I was like, oh my God, I need the second booking. And so I was thinking about where should I list next? Should it be VRBO perhaps? Yeah. So yeah. right now you're, you're only on Airbnb, right? Yeah. Agreed on that. Agreeing with Kareem. I think the next one is VRBO just because it's very similar to Airbnb. It's almost copy and paste and they have similar protections. Booking.com. I actually need to start digging deeper into it. I've set aside literally four hours next week to get on the phone with one of their guys and talk through, hey, how do we protect against this? How are we collect money? How do we have our systems work with it? Because booking.com, the main difference is everything is instant book. So there's no real screening and you don't need an account to actually book with booking.com. If you wanted to book a hotel or a place with booking.com, you could Google it, book it, and you, you could be 18, right? So just getting, getting comfortable with that piece is the one 
the one thing I'm trying to work through. And you, you can't sync the calendars with Booking.com, can you? Okay. I think you can with Hospitable, right? Kareem, I saw that on Hospitable. So you can. Now you can. Enrico, hey, man. welcome to the Financial Freedom Mastermind call, man. Hey, thanks. One of the things that we do for somebody that's joining for their first time, and this is the first time I've seen you on, is we like <laughs> yeah. to kick it to you and ask just what are some of your <clears throat> investing goals? What do you do? Yeah. Just to share with the group. Yeah, yeah. So hey, everybody, my name is Rigo, Rigo Sanchez. Um, by degree, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I do a lot of manufacturing work, design work, project work. Ultimately, what I want to do is get kind of diversify my income, kind of move away from the corporate world. I still would probably want to work it, but I want to kind of do both sides of it. I want to ultimately get some short-term rentals. I kind of talked to Nidia about this, and I want to do some buying. Maybe get into, try to get a multi-unit soon or, 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 or go ahead and move into the short-term rentals. That's kind of what I'm, what I'm focused on right now. I got my first property, which is my first primary. I'm going to convert that to a rental eventually. And then once I get the next property, that's pretty much it. I'm not really sure what else to say. Thank you, Nii, for you know introducing me to this. Uh, I heard I heard some of you guys on the, on the podcast, and I was like, oh, this is cool. You know, let me, get me, let me reach out to them and see what, what's, what's going on, you know? <laughs> no, well, welcome. We're happy to have you on. And you're going to be just as impactful here as we hopefully are for you. Because... Yeah. We all really help each other out. This is really just a big therapy session, all right? Because yeah. we all go through some things. We talk through it. But yeah. at the end of the day, we're all moving toward that goal of financial freedom. Yeah. And as somebody that has thank made it through the portion of financial freedom where you can now do what you love each day, it's it, it truly is just taking it one step at a time. Dude, I started in 2016 and 2022, I was able to move into full-time real estate. Never would have saw it coming that soon. Okay. I was planning for a 10-year career. It turned into about eight years. Yeah. And and it can definitely happen. You just got to keep moving one foot at a time, one step. Good. Yeah, I appreciate it. Like I said, so look, yeah, look, look forward to learn from you guys and see what you guys have to teach me. <laughs> done and done. Desmond, welcome, man. How you doing? Yo, what's up, man? I'm good. How are you? Super good. You still... I notice right now you're sitting in a place with good Wi-Fi. All right, you're not. Yeah, you're, I got a more. Yeah, I got, got got my setup with me today. I was at the <laughs> laundry mat last time, man, playing cleaner. Hey, have have we started taking steps to remove yourself from that? So you know, it's still something I go back and forth on every day, to be honest, right? Because okay, I put my first listing up Christmas Eve. OK, and I haven't had a vacant day since, which is a good problem to have. Right. But I don't know that it would have been that way had I been charging, you know, a more expensive cleaning fee. And also, I think, too, it's been giving me and also my girlfriend, too, who's basically the co-host at this point, a lot of experience. Right. Because if I would have just had a cleaner come in right off the bat. I wouldn't even have really known, oh, you know, you guys really need to be checking on this. Or like, oh, you need to really go over the shower twice because there's going to be a strand of hair you missed, right? So you need to really, you know, those sort of like details I didn't really know about at all, right? And I think those are slowly, you know, being learned as we go through more and more turnovers and whatnot. So I feel like for this year and for this current property, I'm thinking that we might just end up continuing to be the cleaners, right? Because, I mean, it's kind of worked out right now such that Abby, my girlfriend, is able to, you know, do those turnovers. And that's definitely saving, you know, us some money, me some money. So that's been great. But, yeah, I mean, I think on the cleaning piece, it's going to stay the way it is. I, You know, I, my mom's told me, you know, for a long time, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right now, it ain't broke. <laughs> <laughs> it's far from, to be honest. And, you know, the like the only piece is that we have to be here. Right. So if we want to take a vacation, the the, the listing got to get blocked off. Right. That's the only way around it. And I think with the way it's been going and, you know, with such a high ocu occupancy rate at the moment, that'll be OK. Like I, I'd be willing to, you know, block off four or five or six days, you know, if I had to four months before that booked up you know what i mean it's not gonna hurt my pockets too much right 
So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. But, you know, as the year goes on, you know, we'll see how that goes and, you know, we'll see if that changes. So, no, hey, to, it, it, there's a lot of ways to do this. And when you look at the short term, midterm game, the two biggest costs are cleaning. And if you go with the management company, management, right? So those are the two biggest costs. If you are able to eliminate both of those, which you have, it's a lot of cash in your pocket. You've already identified the piece that's a slight drawback, which is, hey, if we want to take a trip to, I mean, dude, you travel all over the place. So if you want to take a trip anywhere, I, I'm just surprised you're in Georgia right now. So I'm happy that this is kind of keeping you close. But if you want to take a trip somewhere, then yes, you got to kind of plan ahead. My whole thing is it's an equation at the end of the day. You've got to look at, okay, as we start to get busier, as we start to get busier with you know the job as well as other things that we're doing, what is the dollar per hour that we're getting paid for this piece? And when does it stop making sense? As long as you do that calculation and right now it still makes sense, that's A-OK. -okay. You've put out a lot of capital to get these things up and running. This is a great way to recoup it a lot quicker. And to your point on that travel piece, right? those four or five days, that could almost be a time where you try out a cleaner, where you say, hey guys, we're going to be gone, so let's just hire the cleaner, even if it's, you know, we're going to make 50% less because we're using this cleaner, at least try it out. Try to get comfortable with it when you take that trip. Yeah, definitely. And that's a good idea. I mean, that's that's something, you know, I've thought of as well. And, you know, I, I probably, I had a, you know, chat with Alpha. He's not here right now, but I had a chat with Alpha last week. We got on a little FaceTime for a while, and he was mentioning Airbnb or I got it written down, or whatever the software is where you can fly in a local cleaner. So I think that is something I'm definitely going to try out because I know at a certain point, you know, and as I continue to scale, especially because right now it works for this property, for the next property, we're going to be in trouble, right? We, 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 we can't just clean them all, right? Especially given that, you know, the the check-in and check-out windows are all pretty much going to be the same, right? So that's where I know things are going to have to change. But I think you mentioned an important point where I spent a lot of capital, right, getting this stuff up and running and, you know, just da down payment aside, right, just in buying the furniture and painting the ugly brick building that, w that it was before, you know what I'm saying? So getting everything together and, ha you know, creating a space where guests will want to stay and will feel comfortable staying, right? I'm probably in a whole, like, 20 bands right now, you know what I'm saying? So as quick as I can bring that back is what I'm trying to do. And, you know, I'm not necessarily doing any – screening or you know none of that is, your money's green come on in come on come on in man come on come you can stay and you know actually it's crazy too because i'm i'm happy to share i had my first direct booking today right yeah right it's crazy so i had a lady who has stayed off of booking.com a couple of weeks back she hit me up again like yesterday literally and I was like, hey, like, do you have any other properties? And it was crazy, too, because Unit C, the other unit, I was actually, like, just getting ready to host today. So it actually worked out perfectly. But I screwed up, and I'm going to tell you all where I screwed up. So I had her sign a guest agreement, and I thought I had put all the house rules in there, but I didn't put no pets. Man, I didn't put no pets. And I got, I got these Ring floodlight cameras. Shout out to Ring. And I noticed, man, there's a dog with one of the one of her, yeah, one of her guests. I'm like, are you kidding me, man? So you live and you learn. You know, I'm hoping that they don't eat up my furniture all night. We're gonna see tomorrow. But I can tell you she's not she's not gonna stay again, probably. <laughs> At least not on that same agreement. I can tell you that now. But yeah, you know, you live and you learn. No, and that's awesome. And thank you for sharing because we all have different items that pop up, right? Like the first time I hosted on VRBO. I think I've told you this before. I've said it before. I didn't know that there was a feature where you can have guests, where you had to enable it to make guests put down money for like damage protection. I thought it was just included. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's included. These guys threw a party, broke the couch, brand new, like $1,500 couch. I'm like, come on, man. Had all this stuff all over the place. So to your point, we all make mistakes. It's got to be fine. But the key is, you know, learning from it. And for the direct booking, do, do you have, because I know I currently use Hospitable. Are you using that software or did you do this through something else? I didn't do it through nothing, dude. Like she hit me up on booking and we started texting back and forth. And, and you know, I'm not so proud of this, but I mean, she basically just sent me the money on Cash App. I had to sign a little agreement that I had pulled off the web and kind of, you know, put my little house rules on there. And that was pretty much it, 
right? So she basically sought me out, and I wasn't even, you know, going to her like, hey, you want to book direct next time or nothing like that. I think as time goes on, I definitely will take advantage of Hospitable and, you know, set up a direct booking site. I was actually on their Clubhouse Q&A earlier, which is, I think, super cool. They're, they definitely are, like, you know, super legit with that. But, yeah, so, you know, right now it's just been, hey, send me the money, sign the agreement, here's the access code, welcome. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, hey, I love it, Desmond. I love that you're getting after it. We're going to get so many learnings through you. And and to that point, two things that you mentioned. One, you keep mentioning booking.com. Got to get on there. Going to have that. Promise you guys, I'm, I'm saying it here so that you guys can hold me accountable. By the end of Q1, we're going to have these properties on booking.com so we can figure that thing out. And two, Clubhouse. Kareem has mentioned it multiple times. I need to figure that piece out too. We will get on there. Don't worry, I'm meeting with a guy on Friday. So <laughs> we'll get going. Um, clubhouse for bookings? Or just, what is that for? Not even for bookings, more for this oh. so we can pull in even more people that are around Atlanta, right? So, uh, but but to your point, Amy T, were you going to ask about some of the direct bookings? Yeah, when it comes to hospitable, I, I can see how it would be really effective if we have like more than one unit. But when you're, I, I guess my question was, if you only have one you know, house or one unit, you know, is it really worth it to invest in for your automated messages and, or can you still automate like through Airbnb and, and merge a calendar a different way? Or, you know, I was just t- trying to see if it was really necessary to add the extra expense because expenses are adding up as Desmond was saying, <laughs> they do add up. Yeah, for sure. For me, it's been crucial, honestly. And like between having the bookings from Airbnb and the bookings from Booking.com, it, it's it's been really crucial, right? Like I, I mentioned, I haven't really had a vacant day since Christmas Eve, and I also have a you know forty hour a week day job. So it, it you know it, it it's definitely I don't know that I would have I know I wouldn't have been able to send out the messages on time and like at the you know, at the same rate that Hospitable is sending them out, basically, right? Because I send out, like, a new reservation message. So once someone books, I send out a message. And some folks book at 3 a.m., 2 a.m., and I think they really appreciate that automated message, and they'll reply back, oh, thanks so much, like, I'm looking forward to it. And that wasn't even me. Like, they thought it was me, it wasn't even me, right? And it's, like, 3 a.m., like, there's no way I'm I'm sending out messages right there, right? And also, I'm forgetful. I, I don't know about, you know, you or, you know, how your calendar looks, but... I know I at least would have forgotten one check-in instruction message or whatever. And I think the crucial piece for me, and I'm working out some of the kinks. There's been a few bugs I've been seeing on Hospitable. I'm working with their support team. But the smart lock integration has been crucial for me. Because I I know, and this actually happened, where before I had it set up, I was having to go and enter in the codes myself manually, right? So I actually forgot to enter in a code for a guest. You're like, hey, like the code don't work. I'm like, well, shit, I ain't put it in. Like, no wonder it don't work. You can integrate your, you know, smart lock if you have an August lock, which Nee recommended to me, or they have, they support some other ones as well, where you can put the code into an automated message and it'll automatically like save that code onto your lock and also like send it to the guest. And I think that for me is like, the most useful piece since it really does kind of completely automate the whole messaging and like logistical side of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. About the smart lock. I had a, a, a situation just recently with, I think my first booking, my cleaning lady tried to get into the house and she ended up having to use the key because I think that the guest locked the bottom lock, like, you know, so I, so I think what my trick is now is to just put like tape over the door, <laughs> like over the doorknob of that lock so that they won't, you know, mistakenly lock it. Cause it's just like, you know, in second nature, you just want to lock the door manually instead of using the, sl- the slage lock. So I think that would be one way to maybe keep them from doing that and maybe put like a sign up that says, you know, do not lock bottom lock, just use your key code. Amy T, I I will do you one better. And I had this happen for the first one. Kareem knows what we do, but I would just switch that bottom lock out for a basic hallway door lock. Those don't have locks on them. It's a quick switch. Those locks are going to cost you like $20 at Lowe's. Switch that out and nobody can lock the bottom. All they can lock is the top. Hmm. Okay. 
but that's definitely a call out. We do that because you want to make it as, you know, tenant proof as possible. Right. So anytime we have a door with two locks and, and you can twist the lock at the bottom, we just switch out that bottom lock with a basic doorknob that has no lock on it. And then all, mm -hmm. only thing you can lock is the, the deadbolt, which mm -hmm. is automatically able to lock too. But piggybacking off of Desmond, one of the other pieces, and really the real reason I got hospitable because you don't you don't necessarily need it for the auto locks. It's great for that because you can send out customized messages, but you can do that through Airbnb as well if you just link it to directly to Airbnb. But the piece that made my heart drop, and, and thankfully you haven't hit this yet, and Desmond, you're, you, you, you haven't moved to this yet, but I had cleaners doing my property and a couple other properties. And I was texting them and messaging them the schedule, right, originally. And there was a last minute booking. And so I didn't get a message to them. And literally people showed up to a house that wasn't cleaned. And it's like, ah, oh, crap. You know, like this is not good. You know, this is not going to be good. You need to give credit. You got to get somebody there ASAP. And that's when I really made the decision like, hey, I'm moving to an automated system. Because what that thing does is it gives the, the cleaners their own calendar so they can see exactly what's going on no matter what platform somebody's booked on or if they've booked direct. That's the reason why I take direct bookings through there is because it's the same messages that go out, same thing that goes to the cleaners. And then also it allows you to create text messages. If you're going to use like a local cleaner, it'll text them two days before, day of, hey, this is what's going on. If you're using like a Turnify, which, which I use now, you don't need that. But when I was using local cleaners, that was critical to be able to have automatic text messages go to them saying, hey, guys, there's a checkout. Need you to be here. Yeah, and I, I, I even do that, too. Like, my girlfriend's a cleaner, but I still send her an automated text, honestly, just to use every piece of the software because it is not cheap. So I'm trying to, you know, get every <laughs> dollar's worth. It's like, did um, you just text me again? <laughs> Nah, literally. But, I mean, she's also found the calendar piece helpful, too, right? Because you can integrate, like, a they give you an iCal link, so you can export that and put it in your own calendar. So she kind of used that to do her own scheduling and whatnot. But, yeah, man, the, the dirty house piece, that's crazy. Yeah. I can imagine that, that. You don't want to have that. That's not, it's not, it's not a good, it's not a good feeling when you're like, man, I forgot to text them. <laughs> Amy T, what you got? Anything on your mind? I always have questions. I guess one question is, and, and excuse my look today. I'm, I've been working out, and Nii caught me right in the middle of a heavy sweat. So, hey, come on now. <laughs> no, but um, my question about your listings, like, do you all usually have or require a government ID, or does Airbnb automatically require that? Anybody want to take that? Desmond, you want to go first? <laughs> So yeah, like I had said before, and I, I'll admit, like my my process my processes need to be improved. My I'm, my focus right now is cash, cash, cash. I will say that right now. So I think Airbnb does have a like verification process, or they at least make sure that the guest is of age, I believe. But I know for booking, which is where most of my listings or my bookings have come from. They don't really do any sort of like verification or anything. So I'm still trying to figure out like what the best way is to, you know, protect against that. And same goes for like damage deposits. Like I think bookings a little behind Airbnb where they don't really like give away to like send or request money from the guests or also like, you know, I, I don't I don't because typically it's hotels on booking dot com. Right. So typically they'll have like credit card processors and I don't have that. So that's like a piece I'm trying to figure out. But I'm definitely curious to hear other folks' thoughts on like what their verifications look like, because mine is non existent. <laughs> Come on now. Hey, we they say that the, the good artists create the great artists still, man. So I learned that from others as well. Marcus Mayfield, who actually has joined us a couple of times, is the one that taught me that. But long story short, on Airbnb, they have some toggles that you can hit where you can say, hey, you got to re you require government ID. You can say, hey, I require them to have positive reviews from other hosts. And I personally recommend that you do like a good portion of that just to protect the property. When you've been through, you know, one or two people damaging a property or a VRBO party on the first time that somebody's there, you start to get a little paranoid. So I may go overboard. But we definitely do verify identities. And on the VRBO front, which is, as Kareem mentioned, a little more shaky on that verification, if somebody's reaching out and they don't have, you know, the ID and things like that verified or reviews, then we're, we're sending a message saying, hey, guys, please confirm that you've read all the 
rules and that you agree to them and also send us your driver's license like you know so that we can verify that you are you before accepting the booking so you are actually requesting their driver's license oh. it's it's a bit much but yes yes we are and some people get a bit offended with it and those people yeah. may shift away and things of that nature and sometimes we're thankful because somebody's like oh yeah well i'm actually getting my driver's license next week i just turned you know like 19 i'm like hey man this ain't the spot for you <laughs> You know, we can get you when you turn 25. It's just like, you know, the car rental places, right? Car rentals aren't going to let you get a car unless you're 25 plus because they know that typically it's 18 to 24 year olds that are trying to, you know, joyride the car. So is that to say you don't allow 18 year olds to book your property? We usually go 25 plus, right? Wow. Unless you have okay. reviews. The, the key is, the caveat is... If you have if you have positive reviews, anybody can book. You've got good reviews, you can book. If you have no reviews, which is a lot of people, we're going to ask you to send the ID and then also confirm you've read the rules. And when you're sending the ID, we're looking to see that you're 25 plus. If you're not 25 plus, we decline it. Mm -hmm. I think I have mine set to 21 plus. And would you say, Need, that that's a luxury that you have given like your occupancy rates or maybe given your number of listings? I'm guessing like... Is that something that you were doing, you know, earlier in the game or is that something that you kind of adopted later on down the line? Definitely something that was adopted a little later. And it was really to avoid the, the issues. Right. Because at the end of the day, I'd rather the place for three days or four days sit vacant than to have somebody go in there, throw a party. And now I've got a headache because I got to stop what I'm doing, go over there and fix this and then come back. So I always try to counterbalance and, and this is the thing that you should do as well, right? And even with like the, the cleaning thing that we talked about, right? It all kind of goes together. You got to counterbalance everything that you have going on and figure out what's the best use of your time. I know for me, the best use of my time is working with more clients. It's trying to optimize the system and build the team up to where it's really strong and things of that nature. And so if I have to drop everything for four or five hours to go and you know fix a situation, it's not good. It's like, hey, I'm burning time that could be doing something else. And so that's that's why I adopted some of those rules. And then I learned what others were doing that had been in this space for a while, too. How do you uh, go about? Oh, this is I'm sorry. This is like so separate. But the subject is insurance companies, like partnering with different companies, you know, like outside of Airbnb, VRBO. So how do you go about partnering with like insurance companies? Yeah. So we've been, it's kind of cool. A lot of insurance companies and things of that nature will reach out through those networks, through an Airbnb, through a VRBO. And what we typically do is when we get one of those and we have three of our properties where we have, whether it's insurance or a construction company or, or something like that, that, that where people are staying for longer terms and they've signed like leases. And so anytime somebody books, and the example I'll give is this house we have in Lithonia. This insurance company reached out and said, hey, we need to book this place for the whole October because our client had a fire, right? And so we said, absolutely. You know, we let them book and they've since extended through the end of the year and they just now extended through the end of January. And they're probably going to extend again because anytime they're fixing up a property, it can, you know, especially a fire, right? It could be a lot going on. But I also follow up with the actual insurance agent because they have to have their info in there. So I call them. And, and talk to the agent and said, hey, you know, we've got multiple properties, all these other ones going around. Any clients that you have, we would love to be able to service you. And then take it a step further. I get their email address and add them to like I have something called follow up boss, which I use for my real estate, for my realtor business. And so I created this campaign and follow up boss where once a month it sends any property that we have under our management to them just in an email like a reminder like hey if you need a property check out this one here go some highlights with pictures to kind of stay top of mind and so that's that's what we're doing any other comments any thoughts anybody this is all new to me i didn't even know and that totally makes sense that insurance companies need to place people i didn't even know that that was a thing and now i'm like shit like should i reach out to my agent and say look like you need you need a spot because i mean that that would be a great deal right because i mean ideal like right now all of my bookings have been like one or two nights. So we're turning the place over every night or every two nights. And we're going to a laundromat every three nights, every four nights. And it's starting to get exhausting. But it'd be cool, you know, to have extensions or midterm stays of a month or two months. Like, that's the ideal. So I might need to start hitting up some insurance agents. That's awesome. 
apps and I added my personal insurance agent too. After I talked to somebody else, I was like, hold up, man, I, I've been using the same insurance agent for so long. So I added her to the list too, to get those emails. Just like, Hey, we have these just a reminder. Yeah. So I just closed in October. I got a four unit and he helped me close and I've got one long-term rental. Me and my girlfriend live in one of the units and then the two downstairs are short-term rentals. That's a nice deal. <laughs> I was looking for that. Yeah. Man, yeah, I, it feels like it, dude. I, I, I was trying to take it from him. He wouldn't let me have it, though. I was like, hey, <laughs> man, let me let me take this one. <laughs> I jumped on that shit ASAP. Yeah, it's crazy, too. <laughs> man, it, it's crazy because, like, okay, the projections, you know, for the short-term rentals were about, like, 2200 for the one-bedroom, one-bathroom. And, by the way, I'm in College Park for the folks that are in Georgia. Um, and it's crazy because... I'll just, you know, full disclosure, my, currently my mortgage is at 3300 and it's going to go up a little bit because of my insurance. I just changed it. But my mortgage is currently 3300 I got a long-term tenant who's paying about 1100 a month. You know, you do the math, and literally it, the, the, the unit downstairs that I have hosted has been hitting the projections, if not exceeding it. And I just hit a realization the other day. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, when February comes, I think I can pay my mortgage with just one short-term rental and the long-term tenant that I have, which, like, I could – I'm just giddy thinking about that, honestly. You know, I could be in here doing backflips just talking to you all about that because it's it's crazy to think, right? And, like, before I jumped into all of this, I had been running the numbers and crunching a bunch, and I probably declined, like, 30 properties that Nee has sent me. I'm like, dude, like, I don't know, I don't know, and, like – I have been looking at a lot of or a lot of single family units with like the ADUs were on the market and I was scared to jump into that because, you know, it only gave me one other property to kind of, you know, rent out or do a short term rental with. But now having the four units, dude, it's been gold. And like with the the unit downstairs that's about to be listed now and I have the she I got the direct booking in there tonight, who won't be saying tomorrow because of the dog, but I think with once that one goes up and starts generating some money, I'm going to be paying the utilities. I'm going to be, you know, paying hospitable. They're forty dollars a month and all the other small fees. And I think I can maybe even profit a little bit, which like I can't. Yeah, I mean, I can't even put into words how like exciting that is for me. Truly, I can't. I can't. I can't communicate it, but. Yeah, man, it's been cool. Desmond, all I gotta say is once that once the other unit's up and running, the whole financial freedom mastermind group is coming to your crib for dinner. It's on you, man. All right, you <laughs> you making money out here? You rolling the money? We coming to your crib for dinner, man. Well, I tell you right now, my unit, if y'all could see it, is basically a storage locker. <laughs> Everything else. So that's another problem I'm trying to figure out. Where do I put all this stuff? I got towels and sheets man everywhere so <laughs> need to figure that out that is amazing man and i actually have a, a really good friend and families but i mean i lived in philly for a decade so I, I got a bunch of people up in philly but one of my good friends is looking to buy something out in the poconos too i can't figure out why because i'm trying to get out of the cold but apparently people travel there right apparently people go to the poconos for fun and it's beautiful it's beautiful in the poconos i love the poconos man <laughs> Desmond, you've been there? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. I was actually there in the winter, too, and I liked it, which is saying a lot for me because I don't like the cold either. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice up there, dude. I lived in Philly for a while, too, so, yeah, it's nice. Closing cost is typically 2 to 3% of the purchase price. And so if you're going to buy a house for 200 k you can expect, call it 6 k in closing cost on top of the down payment that you're going to put down. And then there's other things that you can do. There's something called a two to one buy down that lenders are probably talking to you about where that would add more cost or you can buy down the interest rate, which would add more cost. But if you have just the basic closing cost, it's roughly two to three percent. But what I'd recommend, especially in the time period that we are right now, which is the winter time with interest rates way high, any offer that you put in. And this is something I do myself. Go for it. Always ask for two. If you're doing it conventionally, you can get 2% toward closing from the seller if they agree to it. So say you got a house that's 250, right? And you're approved for 260. I would offer 
let me even take a step back. I would, any offer that I put, I always put X percent toward closing from the seller. If they don't agree to it, it's even worth paying over asking if you need to, right? Like I'm a-okay having that financed to keep the extra money in your pocket. All right, y'all. Well, hey, I appreciate you joining. Thank you for just continuing to continue down this pathway toward financial freedom. It truly inspires me too. And these calls that we have really do function as a, a mini therapy session and it helps just keep everybody energized. So I appreciate it. I love this and I look forward to seeing much more success from everybody on here in 2023. Let's get it. All right, y'all. Have a good night, y'all. See you guys. Deuces.